Broken symmetry. British mathematician and writer Ian Stewart provides us with a different perspective of symmetry in his book. Nature's numbers, particularly on chapter 6, broken symmetry. This chapter represents that all the patterns we see have undergone processes in anified way to look at what they arino, that is. They are diverse and disparate from. Symmetry is described as a phenomenon when any object has identical or balanced proportions in its halves, which Stuart himself described as bilateral symmetry. He defines symmetry as the phenomenon wherein an object or shape becomes exactly like another, even when you move it in some way. Whether you turn it, flip it, or slide it, Herman Will and Richard Feynman share the same idea as they see. Symmetry in things that have been subject to a certain operation and appear exactly the same after that. Operation, such operations in the eyes of Stuart are what we call transformations. Stuart presented three common transformations, reflection, rotation, translation. Reflections or flips are also known as bilateral symmetry. It simply is a mirror effect or when one object is reflected across a plane to create another instance of itself, like the shape of a heart, a butterfly, or even the human body. Rotational or spin symmetries occur when you get the exact same image of an object when you spin it, this occurs to shapes like squares or circles or in natural things like starfishes or flowers. Translations are symmetries wherein an object slides or is relocated to another position while maintaining its general or exact orientation. Stuart called this kind of symmetry as the rule for moving things around which creates repeated units on the plane, like floor tiles or wall bricks. But the question is, where do the symmetries of natural patterns come from? Stuart further discussed to us the concept of broken symmetries, the main idea of this chapter. He used throwing a pebble into a pond as an example to visualize this idea. The pond has so much extensive points in it that we only see it as a flat body of water without seeing different patterns exist. As the pebble meets the surface of the pond, we disturb and lose all its symmetries except for the point where the pebble strikes. Altering the original state of the pond created a pattern of concentric circles that we see as ripples in the water. Stewart provided us with a unified understanding that the most basic form of pattern is the same as the pattern formation of symmetry breaking. Stewart made us wonder what the world would look like if the universe's symmetries were asymmetric. Stewart provided us with the most fundamental method of pattern information as what well governs this entire universe. That means that our universe could have been different. It could have been any of the other universes that, potentially, could arise by breaking symmetry in a different way. Well, that's quite a thought. But there is an even more intriguing thought. The same basic method of pattern formation. The same mechanism of symmetry breaking in mass-produced universe. Governs the cosmos, the atom, and us. Nature contains symmetry, which can be seen in patterns. Although it goes in notice, symmetry can be seen if we look closely and pay attention to how lines make shapes in the leaves of plants, trees, and our objects. We've learned that pattern modification can also be referenced as broken symmetry in this context. Although I acknowledge that I was unaware of them, I find symmetry in nature to be incredibly beautiful. Now that we know that nature is much more than just green leaves and flowers, I'm thrilled about that. Stewart further discussed to us the concept of broken symmetries, the main idea of this chapter. He used throwing a pebble into a pond as an example to visualize this idea. The pond has so much extensive points in it that we only see it as a flat body of water without seeing different patterns exist.